Hello everybody. Hope you all had a nice spring day today. Today's video is back to the TIO2 experiments. I've been messing around trying to engrave on different surfaces other than just ceramic tiles. And here's an example of a cement paver I did. And I also did some random rocks from my garden that I'll show later on in the video. These are all done with this uh, same spray technique that I showed in my stop using paint video. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to that video. Except that I've changed the mix a little bit thanks to the suggestion of one of my subscribers. First off, I want to say thanks to Giovanni HH2JG. I hope I got that right. That's the subscriber who suggested this mix and once I tried it, yes, it worked fantastic and really helps extend the life of your spray bottle. The other mix was just too thick and it would clog up and I actually got to the point where I was just like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. But anyways, the mixture is still very simple and works just as good. The benefit is, like I said, that this mixture won't clog the sprayer up near as much as the other way. So in a spray bottle that is capable of a fine mist, you will want to add one part of TiO2 to five parts of alcohol. And that's, that's it. That's all there is to it. You want to shake it before you spray and, and try to get a good even coat on there. And uh, that's, that's all there is to it. Now, to be honest, I did not run a power scale test grid on this beforehand. I thought I had enough practice on some of the other tests I had done that I knew, you know, the ballpark of where it needed to be. And honestly, I should have done the test. And I think if I had, this would have turned out a lot better and a lot darker. But it still shows that, yes, you can engrave on concrete pavers. You just got to do the scale test to get your settings right, just like every other material. Now the cleanup process couldn't have been easier. I just uh, grabbed the garden hose and gave it a good spray down. Took maybe 30 seconds or so, and that's all it took. And then I let it set out in the sun for about an hour and dry off. You might notice some discoloration on this paver and that has nothing to do with the engraving process or the spraying on of the TiO2. That is because this paver, I literally pulled this out of my garden and it's been sitting out there for, I don't know, at least five years. So it's got like a lot of staining on it. I tried to clean it beforehand. And that's another thing too. I think that if you used a brand new paver, and probably maybe a white one if you could get it or whitish you would get a lot better results as I mentioned earlier I did engrave also on some rocks and the results were a lot better than on the concrete I don't know if it has to do with density but like the concrete has a lot of pores, a very porous and rough surface. And to be honest, so I was a little surprised you even could engrave on it. Now on the rocks, the much smaller pores, it's, it's uh, a, a lot smoother surface. And I used white rocks and the results I got on that were fantastic. I have no idea what kind of material these rocks are made of. I couldn't tell you that but I kind of got a feeling that just about every rock out there will probably work if you can find them if, that are flat. That was the only problem I had is trying to find rocks that actually have enough flat surface area to be able to actually engrave anything. And I didn't have a lot of choices out in my yard, but I'm sure if I went on a rock hunt, I could round up some that would be good for the job. And as you can see, I also did some tests on just your regular brick. I don't even know what, what you would call this. Uh, it's just another brick I found in my yard and decided to turn it into a uh, laser engraving experiment.
Here's what some of the results look like after the engravings. Here's the brick. I don't know if the brick shows its true color here on YouTube, but in it, it's, it's sort of a brownish red color in person. And the black is, it's okay, but I think I could have gotten the settings uh, a little bit better than that and gotten it somewhat darker. It really did do well on these rocks, and I, again, I don't know what type of material this rock is. It's just a, a rock that was out in my front yard that we used for landscaping, and I stole it for this project. But it did come out fairly black and fairly dark, and it's the surface was not that flat either. It's got a lot of ups and downs in it, but still was able to engrave. And then this one came out the best, and this is another rock, but it had a lot flatter side to it. And once I propped it up, I was actually able to get a pretty good engraving on this one. Really black. And again, the cleanup on all these was the same thing. I just put them in the yard and hosed them off, and that's all it took. The settings I used on these rocks was 5,000 millimeters a minute and 50% power. I used the same vector file on each of these rocks and the brick, just different size, you know, I resized them. And that was using a 10 watt Raleigh Lasermatic 10 for the engraver. And that, my friends, is the end of the video. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys all get out there and start engraving your rocks. Steal some of your neighbor's rocks and engrave those rocks. And just in general, have some fun and create something original and of your own. Until next time, take care.